Thank you, Jesus. Well, you can be seated. I'm going to have my lovely, beautiful wife to come and just greet you this morning. Amen. Look at this. So professional. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to put a little caboose on that. I don't know if you mentioned it, but if you wanted to give online, I know a lot of you are uh, streaming through Facebook. That's how we're doing it, right? Um, but you can go to copyministries.org and there's a give button and you can actually give online through, with a credit card. Yes. Thank so you I wanted to mention that. that as well. Mm -hmm. The flags are up outside. I don't know if you've been able to have a chance to drive by as you've uh, been staying at home, but I know sometimes it's nice to just get out a little bit and take a drive, but they look wonderful and it's just so encouraging. And with the winds today, they're really, they're really flying, but um, we are just still believing. I hope that you are taking this opportunity um, to just continue to feed your faith and just continue to pray, seek God, allow him to deal with your heart. Um, and we will come out bigger, better, and stronger. And I'm, I didn't mean bigger because we've been quarantined and all we want to do is eat, but I mean bigger spiritually in Jesus name. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Amen. I've seen some of those uh, memes, uh, you know, pre-quarantine, post-quarantine uh, things where people are just all swollen up. But anyway, uh, you know, there's, there's something to be said about being, being in a house. Uh, we have, uh, we, we've enjoyed some family nights. Uh, we've enjoyed some games. Um, we got games out Friday night and played. Uh, so, you know, it's all, it's all good. The governor of Ohio still encouraging families to get out, go for a walk. Uh, do something, spend time together, and uh, may this be a time where there's really some true unity back in the lives of families, because sometimes we can get too busy. Now, I don't believe God brought this to slow us down. I've heard all kind of goofy stuff. Uh, I tell you what I don't like is people making accusations against my God when it's the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. So, but I do know that if you're going to go through something, come out better. I do know that. Come out better. Don't come out bitter. Come out better. We don't get bitter. We get better. Folks, there's people making decisions for us, some decisions we wouldn't make. I mean, some decisions contradict another. But the truth is we're in this, and we're not in it alone. God's with us. God is with us. And uh, he's going to help us out of this right here. Uh, so uh, anyway, if you got your Bible... I want you to hold your Bible up, and I want iPad Bible. I still like, I still like the Bible. I don't know. There's something about the feel of a Bible that I like. Uh, I've got about four of them sitting on my desk. Scott had come in and joke every now and again, said, how many do you need? I said, I don't know. Uh, you know, I've got every Bible that I've ever preached out of, honestly, since for 37 years, got every Bible. I got the Bible that my grandmother gave me in uh, 1972 or something, and I preached my first sermon out of it. I still have it. I like Bibles. Hold it up, and I want you to stay with me. This is my Bible. My God is going to speak to me through his word. The Bible is God speaking to me. I will hear and I will obey because what's in this book develops faith. And by the faith in my heart, I have the power to change things around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isn't that a good confession? Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I, I, uh, I'm going to stay with the subject that I've been talking about, and that is the uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Ghost, how we're going to stay with this and keep walking with the Spirit of God. It's very important. It's very important we understand. So I'm going to go back, and uh, some of you may remember the text that we've, well, we've been reading. Uh, I'm going to go back and read it uh, just because I think it's a good starting place. I used to think that if you read the same text over and over that people would think that you don't have anything else to say. But then I realized that some of the, some of the men that I've followed that's been dear to my heart 
We'll read the same text for week and week, but that's not their whole message. So I want you to go back with me to John's gospel, chapter 16. Amen. John's gospel, chapter 16. I believe this tells the story and uh, what goes and and what happens here. So uh, that I think is very important. Now, John's gospel, chapter 16. The Bible says, but now I go away in verse five, verse five. I better tell you the verse before angel says, what verse? That was one of the, that's one of the sayings that people, how well do you know your pastor? Me saying, I only mess up when angel's around. Well, that's because if she's not here, she can't tell me. Uh, But now verse five, I go away. I go away. Folks, when you love someone, the last thing you want them to do is go away. I go away to him who sent me, that would be the Father. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Well, that only makes sense. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Let me tell you, I tell you the truth. When will you ever find Jesus telling you an untruth? I'm thinking, you know, Lord, you didn't even have to put that in the Bible because if it's there, especially in red letter editions, we know you're telling us the truth because you said it. But I'm glad you went ahead and reemphasized who you are. You're the spirit of truth. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. Say with me right now, it's to my advantage. Now, I want you to know they couldn't understand this with the state of mind they were in, but he said, it's going to be to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the helper, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judge. I still have many things, many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them, understand or get them now. Let me tell you, there are certain things Jesus wanted to tell them, but they could not get it. They couldn't grasp it. But when the helper, the teacher comes, we're going to be able to understand because he's the one who reveals inside of us. Paul prayed a prayer for the church of Ephesus. He said, I pray that God would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. As we hear the word of God, we take in knowledge. We take in the word of God. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the spirit of God inside of us that turns that information, that turns that the preaching of his word into revelation for us to live by it. We've got to have revelation. I've heard people tell me, yeah, I know the word, but don't know how to live by it. Why? It hasn't become revelation to them. They've not allowed the helper. They've not allowed the revealer, the revelator inside of them to lead them and to guide them. I really believe in my heart when the Bible says, whatever you ask, the Father shall be done unto you. I really believe that's true. But when you talk to most people, they don't find it to be a reality. The Bible says, if you abide in me, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, the word abide takes means, means to take up residence. If you take up residence in me and allow my word to take up residence in you, then you can ask what you will. How can you tell when that word's resident inside of you? Because that's what comes out of you. See, whenever you're squeezed, what's in you comes out. There's no way to, uh, there's no way to change that. You can, you can say whatever you want to say, but what's in you is what comes out of you. That's just truth. We can talk all we want to talk, but what's in you when pressure hits is what comes out of your mouth. I, I'm, I'm listening to people that, uh, that is faith, word of faith people, not just word of faith preachers online, but word of faith people that, that will speak one thing out of their mouth. But when pressure hits, I watch them do different. Why? I don't know Why? I can't give you all the reasons, but I can give you some suggestions. They don't allow the spirit of God, the teacher inside of them to take the information they have gained and turn it into revelation. You've got to practice the word of God. You've got to practice it. You've got to practice it. You've got to practice the presence of God. More you practice it, the more you get it. I still have many things to say to you in verse 12, but you cannot bear them, get them. However, or how be it, the King James says, when he, when he, when he, not it, when he, the, the person of the Holy Ghost. When he, when he, when he, 
I like it. You know, a lot of uh, Brother Hagen uh, was very emphatic about this when I was in my first year of Rhema 30 some years ago. He said, quit calling the Holy Ghost an it. It's not an it, it's a he. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When he, when he, the spirit of truth has come. He, he, I like that. Just make it, um, you, gotta, you gotta know he's real. He will guide you into all truth. For he, man, ever, when I read this, this word he just keeps getting bigger and bigger in me. For he will not speak, for he will, will speak uh, I lost my, here, let me start all over again. However, when he, he, the spirit of truth has come, he, I like to say it again, he will guide you in all truth. For he, there's he again, will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Wow, wow, there's a lot of he's in there, isn't it? I'm telling you what, this is all about him. He We'll do it. Let me tell you, he dwells in you. I don't know if he dwells in me, pastor. I, I, I don't sense him. Are you born again? Well, I hope so. Well, you can know so. If you're born again, he, he, the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you. As I mentioned uh, uh, last service, he's in me. He is in me. I'm filled with him. I talked about uh, the day that... Uh, I'll just, I'll just retell it. Uh, you know, I used to hear people talking about uh, wall-to-wall carpet. You know, I got, we got wall-to-wall carpet in our house. Well, nowadays, if you get carpet, it is wall-to-wall. But back then, you know, they didn't. It was just more area-type rug. But I kept, minister, I kept meditating on that. He is in me, top to bottom, side to side. And I yelled out one day, he's in me. I got wall-to-wall Holy Ghost in me. There's no room for anything else. Pastor, do you believe you can have the Holy Ghost and have, another, and ha- have an evil spirit? Not in my spirit because the Holy Ghost takes up all the space. There's no space for an evil spirit. And if I stay hold of him, I'm gonna stay full of him. As Pastor Barkley says, you gotta know you're God-possessed. You gotta, you gotta be God-possessed. And you know that by allowing him, the Holy Spirit, to live in you. He will glorify me, verse 14, for he will take of what is mine and declare them or show them to you. God wants to declare and show things to you. He wants to do that. Now, you got to understand he is inside of you. Let me read some verses. Proverbs 20, 27. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the lamp. The King James says the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward depths of the heart or the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit's in us. He's, he's the one who reveals the shine, the light inside of us. Romans 8, 14 and 16. The spirit himself, himself bears witness with our spirit. Now you are a spirit being. Uh, God created Adam as a spirit being and Adam was the righteous of God in the image of God. And before Eve and Adam fell and separated themselves from God, uh, there was no sin, no death in him, but sin separated and Adam being a spirit alive unto God, his spirit died. Just like God said, the day you eat this fruit, you shall surely die. He didn't die physically. They lived on for hundreds of years, had, had children, grandchildren, lived on for hundreds of years, but he died on the inside. But Jesus Christ came to bring life back on the inside. And so you are, etern- you are an eternal being. Your spirit is eternal. Your spirit is eternal. And when you, get bo- when you got born again, the life of God came to dwell inside of you. And it says God's spirit, his spirit bears witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. I know I'm born again because his spirit bears witness with my spirit. I told this story uh, not long ago. Uh, On a Sunday morning here, something happened and I called a few people into the office and uh, it's like, you know, enough, you know, I, this thing really frustrated me. And uh, my Bible's laying there and I said, this will never happen again. 
And so uh, when I got done, Angel and I and the family went down to the Pizza Hut for lunch after church. And my heart was so smitten. Not that I dealt with the issue. It's just I dealt with it out of frustration. And I couldn't even eat lunch. We ordered and I mean, I was so bothered in my spirit. Not because I didn't have the right to do it. It's just because you have the right to do it. It's how you do it that brings life. And I went out to the car and I remember walking out to the car. And I said this out loud, Ken Harbaugh, you are a born again man. Why? Because the spirit of God deals with my spirit. The spirit of God continuously checks my spirit and what's right. And I called and I said, you know, I'm not apologizing for dealing with the situation. It needs to be dealt with. I apologize on how I dealt with the situation. And uh, I want you to forgive me on how I dealt with that. And, uh, but we will make sure that we stay right and not allow this to uh, get us anymore. But our, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You know, they've had people come up to me and ask me, just like you've had this people come up and ask you, are you a Christian? Well, why would you ask? Because the spirit of God in me bared witness with your spirit. We know what goes on. It's called discerning this. We have the right to discern this. Now, that, don't get it mixed up with the gift of discerning the spirit. That's totally different. This discernment is just simply being led that we're going to talk about even more. The ways that God leads us right now, folks, you've got to know how God will lead you. A lot of people don't understand that. I've preached, I, I, I don't even know how many churches I've preached in. When you preach over 300 services a year at one time, uh, you're in a lot of different places. But I've had pastors tell me, you know, uh, Ken, when you come in, I watch you flow in the spirit. And, and how did you get that sensitive? Well, you know, I didn't calculate how I got there. I just know, I just knew for, for years, I'd walk and I'd lay my hands here. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. I don't know, there's something about me putting my hand here. I would say, I'm anointed for revelation. The spirit of the Lord bears witness with my spirit. I'm sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I'm sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I don't hear the, the other spirits. Uh, the sheep knows the voice of, of the shepherd. I listen to his voice. I'm sensitive to his voice. I'm not going to be deceived by an outside voice. I'm not going to be deceived by a common voice. I only hear his voice he dwells inside of me I'm not waiting for something to come on the outside I listen on the inside and I did that for so long and uh, and I say you can do that and I don't know how many pastors that I was with it says you know I'm not even confident I hear from God on a weekly basis folks if people in the pulpit are not confident how what are the people doing you can be confident that God leads you and guides you. You don't have to feel some rushing wind or hear some, some booming voice. Hey, this is God. No. No, just this gentle leading on the inside. I call it being led by peace. If you can't be led by peace, that is the number one way God leads us by peace. When I was in Rhema the first year, we just, there was three of us in one house, and uh, I loved to pray. I got into prayer school, Brother Hagin's prayer school, and I prayed, man, I prayed. I'd pray sometimes all night long. I'd get up, I'd work at Wendy's and close down, and the drive through would close at 2 o'clock, and I'd get in about 2.30, you know, get all of the, the hamburger and chili smell off of me, go to bed, still get up around 6.30 and pray before I went to school, and got ready. Uh, there was some hard times, but I knew it was just for a season. And uh, I, I just, I just got really turned on to praying. And, uh, and so, uh, one night I got into the closet, get into your closet. I was in the closet in my little bedroom there in uh, broken arrow. And I didn't realize that, uh, that, uh, that Pat knew my roommate at the time. Uh, he was from Stockton, California. And, uh, he came in there and he was, uh, talking about, you know, me praying so loud well, I only knew one way to pray, man, and that was, I was in the closet, pray. And he got a chair, his bedroom was next to mine, and the vents was up on top. And uh, he got a chair and yelled up in that vent, Ken, this is God. I'm not deaf. 
When he first did it, I jumped. No, God's not deaf, but as the old timer said, he's not nervous either. Loud stuff don't make him nervous. But the truth is, I knew the difference between the voice of God and the voice of Pat. I knew the difference. You've got to know the difference between, between the voice of God and the deceiving spirit. And that's what's going to keep us from being deceived in these last days by following the leadership of the Holy Ghost. You have got to follow the leadership of the Holy Ghost here. Now, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. How we're joined one with him. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. So God wants us to be led. Be led. And allow the Spirit of God to guide us on the inside. Folks, with everything that's going on around us, I want to mention these things again. Uh, We must understand with all the terror, that's fear, terrorism. See, all this disease, it's like a terrorist. I mean, it creates fear in people. Where do you go? What what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Terror, terrorism, terrorist. We can't leave anything to this world's chance. We can't. We must know where we are in him and we must know our place in him. Quit trying to live natural in this world. Live supernatural. I dealt with all the, we had a conference call some weeks back with all the people ordained and attached to covenant of peace. And people were on this uh, Zoom call overseas, you know, in the United States at the same time. And I was talking about this heavenly environment. See, the Bible says that we, when we got born again, the Holy Ghost came to dwell within us. But through the work of Christ, he caused us to be seated with him in heavenly places. So you are in Christ and Christ dwells in you. That's what makes us one. You're in Christ and Christ is in you. That means, I mean, this thing has become so one. But it says... And you, you've been made to sit with him in heavenly places, in Christ. So I had to get myself to believe that I was actually in him. The Bible says in Ephesians that he gathered together from all in heaven and earth, gathered together, all of us, in him. You know, one time I would, when I would read, we're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ. I, I could see the throne of God. I could see, you know, what Jesus would be like sitting at the right hand of the Father. But I, it looked like if you looked down the line, there'd be millions and millions and millions of chairs. And I saw myself all the way down at the end. You know, the further you get down there, the smaller it gets. I saw myself all the way down at the end because I could not grasp the reality of who I was and where I was placed. And uh, I remember the day that, it, that it, just, it just came alive in me. That when Christ sat down, he took all of us and put us in his bosom. And he sat down at the right hand of God. There's not another chair there. We're all in him. And people say, oh, pastor, I I can't hear God. You should be able to. You're in him. You're right next to him. Even if he whispers, you can hear a whisper somebody that's right next to you. You got to understand, your true environment is in him. Your true position is in heavenly places. The last time I checked, there's no coronavirus in heaven. There's no COVID-19 running around heaven. The last time I checked, there's no AIDS, there's no cancer, there's no diabetes, there's no heart problems, there's no liver problems, there's no mental problems, nothing. Heaven is heaven. And if that's where we are at, then I would say, well, if I'm in heaven and none of these diseases in heaven, then I'm going to walk as if I'm free from it here. Oh, pastor, that's a whole lot to juggle. Well, you better start juggling, my brother and sister, because I'm telling you, the reality is God placed you in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. None of these things are there. And now just because we live in this natural world with all these diseases, you've got to know that he will shield you. That I'm still in him. I'm not walking with him. I'm in him. I'm in him. I have walked for hours 
and made myself believe it on purpose. I put my hand out. First times Angel and I would walk together with our hands out. We, we held hands and we'd walk across our little living room, walking back and forth, praying together. I'd walk for, I'd walk and I'd say, walking with God, hand in hand. I'm walking with God. I'm doing his plan. Hearing his voice, keeping his command. I'm walking with God, hand in hand. And I, I would say that, and just walking with God. And then, and then I w- I'd keep saying it, but then I started seeing myself walking with God. One, God's walking, and I'm, I'm inside of him. I'm inside of him. I don't see him out here anymore. I'm inside of him. God's walking, I'm inside of him. God's walking, enemies firing at, firing at the Lord, firing at me, but, it's, but he is my breastplate of righteousness. He is my shield of faith. He shields me. Folks, when you are in him, that's why I want to teach people who they are in Christ. When you are in him, you are shielded. Shielded. That don't mean weapons won't come, but you're shielded. If I'm in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, that's my environment. Now I'm going to live here. But now I can't have that spiritual understanding and then walk here like I have a different reality. The only example I've ever used, a few years ago, we were at Disney and uh, all of us went to Animal Kingdom and got on that safari vehicle. And uh, we were there and the rhinos were running around and we had to hold back because they said if they got closer, they could charge and, and, uh, and the angels praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus, help us. And so, uh, but you know, they're, they're, like, they're, they're wild animals. And... Uh, but the truth is, Disney did a good job. One of the richest entities probably operates in America and around the world. I don't know where all they have them now. But Disney has money. Some of the best animation, the best colors you ever see anywhere in the world by any corporation. And with all of their money, the best they can do is assimilate the Africa savanna. They cannot create South Florida into Africa. That's not Africa. And working in Africa for 27 years, I promise you, it's not Africa. It's not Africa. So they have to give them special injections, special vitamins. They got to keep them healthy. Why? Because they're trying to create an environment that's not natural to their DNA. Let me tell you, you take those animals and put them back in their natural environment, they thrive, other than the food chain. They thrive. Because that's their natural habitat. My natural habitat is heaven. My natural position is in Christ. And even though I walk on walk in this earth, I've got to know that I'm walking in him. I'm walking in him. As you've received the Lord Jesus Christ, walk in him. I've got to walk in him. Listen, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you and guide you. It may not be some drastic thing that you go, whoa, man, that was God just spoke. No, it may be just, I think I'm gonna take the route, I think I'm gonna take this route today. No flashes of lightning and thunder, no seeing angels, just simply being led by the Spirit of God. This is what keeps us safe. This is what keeps us protected. And, uh, And I'm telling you, I I wrote down here uh, a story. I I can't can't go without telling a story. And you've heard me talk about uh, places where I've been in Africa where God told me to pray on vehicles and different things that kept me safe. But uh, in 1995, I was in this one area and I got so sick, so sick. Some of you have heard this, but several people stream that don't sit here in the sanctuary. Uh, I got so sick that uh, I could hear them talking outside of this room. What if this white man, this Mozungu, what if he dies? Folks, I was already in a place of going in and out of my consciousness, uh, almost like hallucinating over some things. And the truth was, I had to fight the thought, what if I don't live? What if I don't live? What if I don't live? What you know, what's, what, what's going to happen back home? What's going to happen to my family? What if I don't live? And um, someone, not something, 
the Holy Ghost rose up inside of me. And they called a doctor to my side. Now, this is where the Holy Ghost, I've told you last week, the Holy Ghost saved my life. They called a doctor to my bedside. And he says, you got parasites eating you alive on the inside. Well, I knew this thing was spiritual because what we were in and, and the results that we were having. I know it had a natural result on my body, but I know it was a spiritual attack. And I, uh, he said, I'm going to have to give you, I'm going to give you some tablets. They call them pills. They call them tabs. And I'm going to give you a shot, an injection. They call them injections. I'm going to give you an injection to knock you out so the tabs I give you will, will work on the inside of you. And I remember I asked him, how long will I be out? And he said, about eight hours. When he said that, he, the Holy Ghost, stood up inside of me. I wasn't aware. I mean, you're laying there so sick, you're not sensitive to like, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. But I knew it was him. And I said, I won't take your, your injection. I won't, I'm not going to let you give it to me. He says, you got to have it. You, 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 won't, you won't make it if I don't give it to you. You're, I'm, I'm up and down. I mean, a vomiting. And, and uh, he says, you won't make it. I've got to give you this. I said, I won't take the injection. Give me your tabs. And I laid there and I warred against that, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'd be in and out. But every time I was conscious, I'd pray in the Holy Ghost. I'd pray in the Holy Ghost. And uh, so when the doctor left, I told the African pastors with me, because uh, I had a crusade. I told the doctor, I, gotta, I preached tonight at five o'clock. He said, not here. You won't preach here. So I told him, at five o'clock, you come and get me out of this bed and you help me. And I went to the crusade ground. And I waited and waited. I mean, miserable. And they sang and sang and sang. And I'm thinking, just quit singing. Just shut up. No more dancing, please, God. No more dancing. May they be led to shut up. I'm miserable. Sitting in that van, hot. And uh, then he introduced me. All the way from America. God's man of faith and power. And I'm thinking, oh my God. I feel like I'd have to die to get better. I mean, I was felt terrible. And uh, as soon as I got the top step of that little platform, the power of God hit my body. I preached. I preached. People got born again. People got healed. As soon as I walked off that platform, that thing hit me again. And I'll never forget sitting by that window. I'm asking for them to get me a Coca-Cola or something to put inside of me. And they were, they were out there. You know, a man was, was uh, manifesting demons. And there were some deacons there at the local church trying to cast him out. They'd hold him down. And the man would get up and run. And, and they'd say, come out. And he'd get up and run. And I yelled out the window and said, leave him alone. He wants to keep the demon. <laughs> I was so ready to get out of there. The man didn't want to be delivered. I said, leave him alone. The man wants to keep the demon. But anyway, I got back. And I mean, as soon as I got in there, up out of me, I didn't have much in me left. But the next morning I woke up. Every symptom gone. I was so weak, like they had no more strength in me, but every symptom was gone. And later the Spirit of God said, if you would have taken that shot, you wouldn't have been able to war this in the Spirit. And I'm thankful, even through that situation, not feeling a great anointing, not seeing lightning and flashes and, and uh, hearing booming voices, God protected me. He on the inside of me. Now I'm telling you, there's a lot of things I've gone through, but I'll never want to go through that again. That was one of the worst situations I ever walked through. Fell alone. But he, the comforter, the one called alongside to help, he never left me. He never forsook me during that time. Led me through all of this. Led me through all of this. You must realize that though this outward man perishes, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, there's three ways. There's three ways that God leads us. He leads us by just, the, just an inward intuition, what I call by peace, an inward voice. And then there's just a the voice of the spirit the, where the spirit of God actually speaks. 
And uh, we'll eventually get to that. But I want to talk, uh, you know, we won't get it all done now. And uh, I made you stay on this even even tonight. I don't know how the communion service is going to go. My heart's open to whatever God has. But how you've got to become more spirit conscious. So uh, before, I, before I close today, I want you to understand. The Bible says, do not be conformed, Romans 12, 1. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Sometimes we become so natural conscience, we no longer become spirit conscience. You've got to become more conscious and more aware of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. I wouldn't even want to close this service today without telling you, you've got to become aware of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You know, sometimes it takes a long time for people to tap into he, the Holy Ghost on the inside. But you've got to become more spiritual conscious and you are natural conscious. So many people are conscious about all the natural things around them, but you've got to develop something inside of you, become more conscious of God, more aware of God than you are the natural. Now, it don't just happen just because you read the Bible one time or if you read the Bible through. It doesn't just happen because you attend church. It happens because you practice it outside of church. You become more aware. I know what it is to pray and pray and pray and you can't get out of this natural consciousness and it's like you never tap into it and it takes a long time to develop that where you can go to prayer and start tapping into it quickly. But the more you practice, the better you get. The more you learn how to close off your mind and the natural things around you, the quicker you get there. And that's what God wants. God wants us to become conscious of him, to be aware of his presence. Everywhere I go, God is there. Everywhere I'm at, God is there. God's leading me. God's guiding me. That doesn't make us, you know, spiritual, uh, you know, like close encounters of the God kind. It's not like, you know, some scientific movie. Beam me up, Lord. No, no. This thing is about just being aware. I've watched people get really goofy because they got a wrong kind of spiritual. I'm talking about walking with God where people know you know God, but you don't have to say it. People know it because there's something in you that they know. And, and you've got to become more conscious of God around you. You've got to become more God conscious. And to do this, there's three things that we'll talk about. Not today, don't. You're not even here for me to look at your faces and start looking at this. Praise God. Hey, Amen. I look this way and got the worship team looking in the back. I got the, the, the media team and a clock that tells me, you don't have to pay attention to me today at all. But there's three areas that you have to develop to become God conscious. You've got to know how to feed your spirit You've got to know how to renew your mind and you've got to keep your body under control. You've got to have, you've got to have a strong spirit. You've got to know how to feed your spirit, man. Uh, that's right, your spirit man. You've got to know how to feed your spirit, man. You've got to know how to feed your spirit. And you've got to know how to get your mind renewed through the word of God. And you're going to have to discipline your flesh. Discipline your flesh. Now, Feeding your spirit is one thing. The more you stay in the word, it renews your mind is another thing. But discipline this flesh, whoo, that's a whole different warfare. That's a whole different warfare because this flesh has had its way for so long and now you're telling it to shut up. Get in line. What do you mean tell me get in line? I'm the, I've been the boss of this house forever. Get in line, your spirit saying, that's right, I'm going to get back in charge. Your flesh says, I've been the boss. But your spirit says, not anymore, bucko. I'm the boss. I'm in charge now. God's in charge. There's a new sheriff in town, and he's the Holy Ghost living inside of me. And flesh, you're going to take a back seat because you're not keeping me out of the presence of God anymore. Folks, if you learn to walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So let's stand and let's make some confessions together. Let's make some confessions together. 
Say, I will feed my spirit on the word of God. I will do what it takes to get my mind renewed. And I will bring restraints and discipline to my flesh. I will walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm a holy person. The Holy Spirit lives in me. He's big in me. He leads me. He guides me. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm seated in heavenly places. When I walk through this world, I'm walking in Christ. No sickness, no plague, no disaster, no destruction. No disease comes near me. When I walk in this world, the angels of God are before me and they are around me. They bear me up lest I fall. They take charge. They do what they're created to do. Now, Father, I thank you as your people solidify this in their heart. May this not be a one-time confession. May they know, may they understand the importance of this. May they know and may they understand the importance of this. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we're not just natural, we're supernatural, Lord. And I want to pray for you today. I, I, I wish that we could line you up here in this altar but if you've got pain in your body, if you've got torment in your mind, if your children are sick, I want you to lay a hand upon your children. But if you're sick, I want you to lay one hand where you're having pain. If it's in your body, if, it's in you, if you're having headaches, migraine headaches, whatever it is. If your back is hurting, have one of your family members to lay their hands on your back. Lay one hand on the part that's being tormented, afflicted. Lift the other hand towards God. And I'm going to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I call heaven to your house. The anointing of God, the power of God, the victory of God. Father, I thank you that your miracles are still for your people. Healing is still for your people. I thank you that the devil is bound. Every spirit of affliction is bound. We curse it in the name of Jesus. We curse all sickness and disease. We curse all sickness and disease. All sickness and disease. Father, I decree and I call your people healed and whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But listen to me. God's made you the head and not the tail. He's made you above and not beneath. He's made you the victor. You're not the victim. Amen. Walk in him and allow him to lead you and guide you. And I'll believe with you and I agree with you that the best days you've ever had are before you right now. We love you. We declared the blessing of God on you. May God continually encompass you with his favor. Everywhere you go, everything you do, I say in the name of Jesus, you are favored of our God. Amen. Amen.